have a Bible with you tonight, we're going to go to 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. Hallelujah. We'll be reading from the King James Version. Amen. It's the only version allowed in my house. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Those others just get you confused. Amen. You can't use 50 different versions because they're all different. Amen. I can read you a verse of Scripture out of the NIV, then I can read it to you out of the New King James, then I can read it to you out of the Revised Standard Version. And they'll all be different. Amen. But God's Word is forever the same. And the closest thing we have to that tonight in the year of 2017, I hold in my hands. Amen. Hallelujah. As close as we can get to the original we have. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. Isn't it wonderful tonight that we have the Word of God? And it's been preserved, Brother David. It's been passed down from generation to generation. And we have it tonight. We're going to look tonight at the prophet Elijah and not so much Elijah as what the Lord told him. But we'll pick this up in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. I'm a little bit loud, brother, if you can. i got a big, big mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to... I'm going to scream or, or, or holler here in a minute. And I don't want to shock them out of their socks. Hallelujah. We pick this up in the middle of a terrible famine. Yeah. And the famine was brought on by the sins of the people and their wicked leader. Absolutely. Amen. Uh -huh. And we find that God has shut up the heavens. Yeah. Amen. Is that Brother Jerry back there? Oh my goodness. Give the Lord a hand for Brother Jerry French has been with us tonight. Amen. Oh, they must not care for you, brother. Give the Lord a hand. I thought that was him. I was pretty sure there wasn't two guys that good looking in Owensboro. Amen? Hallelujah. So I was pretty sure it was Brother Jerry. Appreciate him being here and Brother Dave and Brother Amen. Scott and everybody else that's came out tonight. Amen. But we pick this up in the middle of a famine. God has shut up the heavens. Amen. There's been no rain or dew. Right. Well, you talk about dry times. You ever felt like you was that in that place spiritually? Right. Hadn't been a drop of moisture. Amen. Just like he was going through the desert and you could find no relief. Yeah. Listen, if you walk with the Lord for very long, you've been there and done that. Amen. Right. But we find here that God is getting ready to open up the heavens. And He speaks to the prophet Elijah and He tells him to go and show Himself to Ahab. Right. And we're going to pick this up in 1 Kings the 18th chapter, the 17th verse. And it came to pass... When Ahab saw Elijah, yeah. that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Right. You see, the world has this warped thinking right. that it's the church that is the trouble. Come on. Come on. Amen? Bring it out. That God's people are the ones that stir up trouble. And I'll tell you what trouble is. Same trouble that it was in the Garden of Eden. Sin. Oh, well, you don't hear that in very many churches today. Amen? Because you ain't supposed to talk about sin because you don't want people to feel bad. i got news for you. If you're living in sin, I want you to be miserable. Amen? If you're shacking up, I want you to be miserable. If you're drinking, I want you to be miserable. If you're doing drugs, I want you to be miserable. Amen? I want you to be miserable tonight because I want you to know that your next breath may be your last. Exactly. And if you leave this world without knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you will spend eternity in hell. Amen. Forever and forever. And we find here that the wicked king, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that Ahab did more to provoke the Lord than any of the kings of Israel that were before him. And he says to the prophet, are you the one that's causing all this trouble? And Elijah's response is this. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou. He said, I'm not the troublemaker here, Ahab, you are. You're the reason that the heavens have been shut up. It's because of your wickedness that God has cut off the rain and the dew. So he says, it's not me, Ahab, it's you. And thy father's house. 
in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and thou hast followed Balaam. Yeah. Now listen. Elijah says, Now therefore send and gather to me all of Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. Come on. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Come on. And Elijah came unto the people yeah. and he put something before them that I feel as if the Holy Spirit is putting before the church as we know it today. The Holy Spirit through the prophet of God says, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow Him. And the Bible says the people answered Him not a word. The prophet of God calls for all of the false prophets of Baal the prophets of the grove, and he said, we're going to have a showdown yeah. on Mount Carmel. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to see if those fake, golden, and wooden, and whatever kind of graven images that you worship, All right. we're going to see if that God can supply the fire right. or if my God does. Right. Now we're not going to read all that tonight, but I'll give you the short end of the stick. <laughs> he gathers them all together, Brother Dave. Yeah. And being the polite man of God he is, he said, you can go first. So the prophets of Baal build them an altar and they begin to call upon Baal. Oh, Send the fire. Amen. Send the fire. Yeah, yeah. Consume the sacrifice on Baal. Whatever kind of muckety much they would, might have muttered. Amen. Come on. And finally they, they get so beside of themselves right. they start cutting themselves and going crazy. Come on, preach. Amen. Bring it out. And finally they can't get their God to... Send down the fire. All right. Elijah even pokes at him and says, Maybe he's on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he's asleep. Come on. Maybe he's taking maybe it's during his siesta time. Amen. Right. That's right. How many knows tonight we serve a God that never sleeps or slumbers? Yeah. How many knows tonight that his arm is not shortened? His eye is not dim, his strength is not weakened. He is still God Almighty, the first, the last, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning of the end. So finally, he says, all right, boys, step aside. Let me show you what my God can do. Amen. He repairs the altar and he fixes the sacrifice like it's supposed to be. Yeah. But, but he, he doesn't call for the fire yet. First, he says, go get me some water. Yeah. Pour it on the sacrifice. Go get me some more water. Amen. Pour it on the wood. Dig me a trench around it. Fill the trench full of water. Then he says, all right. Remember, he's done told them, if God be God, follow Him. Right. If Baal is God, then follow Him. So he prays a simple prayer. Right. For God to show Himself to all of Israel for who He is. And the Bible says the fire fell. Amen? Yeah. I'm here to tell you tonight, we still serve the only God that can supply the fire. Amen? Amen. We serve the only God that can raise the dead and heal the sick and open up blinded eyes and open up deaf ears and cause the lame to walk and cancer to fall of us to the sky. Amen? Oh, preach, brother. The Bible says the fire fell and consumed the sacrifice. Amen. And it consumed the wood. Yes. And it consumed the rocks. And it licked up the water that was in the ditch. Amen? Amen. Oh, we're talking about God. We ain't talking about some mamby-pamby little puny thing. Amen? We're talking about God Almighty who in the beginning spoke and said, let there be light. And darkness had to get out of the way. Amen? Oh, I wish somebody helped me preach. Amen? I said, we're serving a God that is alive. He's not dead. He is the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. Amen? So God sends the fire. Yeah. And you know the story, if you know very much of the Word of God, you've read it before, you've heard it preached before. Right. The people begin to say, the Lord, He is God. Yeah. The Lord, He is God. Yeah. Shouldn't take a sign Come on. or a great miracle for out. people to turn to God, but sometimes it does. Yeah. Tell it. So they turn to God. Right. And if you'll read on, you'll find out that all the prophets of Baal were killed. Yeah. Elijah slays the prophets. Come on. And he sends Ahab back. Because he said, rain's coming, Ahab. Yeah. The rain's coming. 
So Ahab gets in his chariot and he takes off home to Mama, which is Jezebel. And he goes in, and Jezebel knows about the showdown. She knows what's going on. And she says, Honey, what happened? Yeah. And Ahab says, Huh? I don't know how to tell you this, but all your prophets are dead. All right. And all they did was stir up the old witch. Preach it. And she sends word. She says, you go, tell, you go tell Elijah yeah. that by this time tomorrow, he'll be dead. Come on. Hey, man, come Turn on. It out. Anytime God moves, the devil gets stirred up. Come on, man. Listen, don't be surprised when God moves in a great service and the first thing you do when you get out the door is get hit in the gut by the devil. Because he wants to make sure that you're not lifted up no longer than, than need be. Amen. He wants to make sure he can bring you down as soon as God lifts you up. When you come into full gospel tabernacle and the Lord blesses you and you're doing, you feel like God has really moved in your situation. As soon as you leave the door, that old devil's waiting to jump on your back. Amen. So the devil always gets stirred up when God's doing something. So don't be surprised about that. So Elijah hears this and he runs. Yeah, he does. And there's a whole lot to this. But none of that's my sermon. I want to get to it. Come on, bring it out. Go with me to 1 Kings 19 and 9. Yeah. We find the prophet of God running, and God wasn't in this. Yeah. We'll find that out when he questions Elijah. Come on. Bring but we find the prophet of God on the run for his life. He had just faced down the prophets of Baal, yeah. the prophets of the grove. Yeah. Now he's running from this one woman. Amen. And to tell you the truth, I don't have any Bible to back this up, so I'm not telling you this is fact. But she might not want to have nothing to do with the lodge anyway. That's why she's sending him a warning first. All right. Why warning? Amen. Why not just say, you two, go sneak up, kill him. Get rid of him. But she sends word, hey, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. Yeah. At this time tomorrow, you're going to be dead. Tell him, so he runs, and he comes to this cave. Yeah. And the Bible says in 1 Kings 19 and 9, and he can listen. And he, you need to read this. I don't. I'm not going to read it all tonight. But if you start where Elijah ran, which is the first part of the 19th chapter, right. you'll find that on his journey, an angel feeds him to give him strength. Now he's running really from God, not so much Jezebel as it is from God. But God gives him the strength to run. Listen, if you're running from God tonight, you need to realize that the place you get your strength from is the one you're running from. Amen. Right. Exactly. If you're cursing God tonight, you need to realize the one you're cursing gave you the breath to do it. Come on. Oh, come on now. I said you need to realize you couldn't take your next heartbeat without God. So he runs and he gets in this cave. How many people ever felt like running and getting in a cave before? You felt like you didn't have no friends. You felt like nobody liked you. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Preach to it, brother Bill. Had a little bird tell me that they talked to somebody and told them I was going to be here and whoever it was said, yeah, I heard he's strict. <laughs> you know my what my response was? Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> I'd rather be called strict than loose as a goose any day, brother Dave. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Preach. That just lets me know I stand for something. Come on. Oh! Somebody help me preach. I said, that just lets me know I stand for something tonight. Amen. Yeah, the Lord. Yeah. Listen to this. He's hiding in a cave. And he came thither into a cave. And he lodged there. Yeah. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, I'm in verse 9. What doest thou here, Elijah? Now you hear that? Yes. God said, what are you doing here? I certainly didn't know. I didn't. I'm not the one who called you to this. He called him to Mount Carmel. Yeah. He commanded him to go show himself to Ahab. Yeah. He commanded him to do the showdown with the prophets of Baal. But he never told him go hide in a cave from Jezebel. So he says, Elijah, what in the world are you doing here? Bring it out. All right. And Elijah's response is this: I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, right. slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Yes. Verse 11. And he said, the Lord tells Elijah, Go forth and stand up on the mount before the Lord. Yeah. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, yeah. and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. 
And after that, there was an earthquake, the Bible says, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a still, small voice. Now God certainly caused the wind. He certainly caused the earthquake. He certainly caused the fire, but He wasn't using those things to speak to the prophet. He would come to Him in a still, small voice. The church of today has lost the ear to hear the still, small voice. Amen. They want the fire, and they want the wind, and they want the earthquake. But the still, small voice Amen. has been missing in our churches. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. And not just whenever you're at church, but in your daily life. Amen. The Holy Spirit will still convict and still lead and guide you into all truths if you will allow Him to do so. So this still, small voice comes that we so often miss. Amen. It says, and it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle. And he went out and he stood in the inner end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, He asked him the second time, What doest thou here, Elijah? Amen. Amen. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, True. because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. That gives him the same answer. Come on. He says, I, even I only, am left. Right. And they seek my life to take it away. Absolutely. Now God's asked him twice, what you doing here? Both times He says, Lord, I'm the only one that's left that's serving you. All of the rest of them have forsaken you. Everyone else has turned their back on you. How many Christians ever felt like that before? How many of you been in the middle of a crowd and you stuck out like a sore thumb? Amen? How many of you ever been in the middle of a church crowd and you stuck out like a sore thumb? It ain't hard in the day that we live in because you can't tell the church from the nightclubs. Amen? So if you're old time, old fashioned, Holy Ghost filled, still believe in the moving power of God and the power of the cross, you still stick out like a sore thumb. Amen. Granny stuck out like a sore thumb. Amen. One of their proud mottos is this is not your grandma's church. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. I wouldn't brag about it if I was you. Because grandma's church had the power. Grandma's church knew how to pray. Grandma's church knew how to shout. Grandma's church knew how to get a hold of God. Right. So he says, I'm the only one that's left. Yeah. So on Solomon Model T going down the road one day out on 431 and it passed me. Hadn't seen nothing like it before. Ain't seen nothing like it since. But I looked at it as it went by, Brother David, and I said, I know how you feel. <laughs> Amen. So he says, Lord, I'm the only one left. Now drop down to verse 18. This is what the Lord says to Elijah concerning the fact that he thought he was the only one left standing for anything. All right. First Kings 19.18 this is the Lord speaking to the prophet. This is His answer to the fact that Elijah is saying, I'm the only one left. Nobody serving God but me. Nobody living right but me. Nobody doing right but me. Nobody living for you, Lord, but me. Nobody cares about you but me. Nobody loves you but me. And the Lord says, Yet, have I, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Amen. 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 God is saying, Elijah, you ain't the only one that's living for me. You ain't the only one that still believes in me. You ain't the only one that still believes in the power and the might that I have. He was telling him that he still has a remnant. And that's what the Lord dropped into my spirit earlier this week to bring to you tonight. God still has a remnant. In the year of 2017, God always has and He always will have a remnant. Say, so Brother Billy, what's that got to do with me? Turn over to Romans, the 11th chapter. Romans, the 11th chapter. You say, what in the world is Elijah hiding in the cave, feeling like he's the only one living right? What's that got to do with me tonight? Some, I don't know how many years, 2,500 years later, something along the line. Maybe more than that. Maybe 3,000. Romans 11 and 2, the Apostle Paul talking about the prophet Elijah. He says, God has not cast away His people, which He foreknew. He says, watch ye not that the Scripture saith of Elias. He's talking about what we read here tonight. All right. How He maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying this, Lord, they have killed thy prophets. Yeah. Dig down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. Amen. Verse 4, But what saith the answer of God 
unto him. Come on. Brother Dave, you may feel like a knot on a log. Yeah. You may feel like a blemish on the surface of the church today. Oh. You may feel like a cast out. You may feel like a leper. You may feel like the one that just ain't in with the crowd and just ain't him. Amen? Yeah. But what saith the answer of the Lord? The Bible says, but what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Verse 5, even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. There was a remnant when Elijah was hiding in the cave. There was a remnant whenever Paul would write this in the book of Romans. Because it looked as if the people had turned from God. It looked as if you couldn't find anyone that was serving Him or living right. I don't know about you, but sometimes it looks that way today. Amen. Amen. You're right. Try turning on some of the Christian television stations. Amen. True. Hey, we don't watch anything but SBN. Amen. We don't watch anything but Brother Swagger's channel. You know why? Because I have every confidence that when I turn it over there, I won't hear about prayer, prayer shawls and I won't hear about holy water and I won't hear about meals and heals and I won't hear about all this other ridiculous stuff. Name it and claim it and grab it and nab it and all this other stuff that we got going on in the church. Amen. Things that the church has traded the gospel for. They have traded the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the message of the cross. They have traded that for foolish fables and are building their hopes upon maybe they've got some creative power in them so that they can create their own world. Honey, I got news for you. There ain't but one creator that has creator creative power in his voice. And it ain't you. His name is Jehovah. His name is Lord God Almighty. His name is the first and the last. His name is Jesus Christ. The beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, I always like to challenge them. Amen. If you believe you, believe you can create something, yeah. We'll all leave out of here and cut off the power and you sit there and say, let there be light and see how long it takes you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, I couldn't mail tonight. Amen. Yeah. How I might before I get out of here. I didn't come packing a diaper bag. Amen. I came packing the Word of God. Hallelujah. That's what I came to give you. Brother Billy may be dead in the morning, so I'm going to preach tonight. Amen. Right. Brother Billy not, might not get to preach at Full Gospel Tabernacle again, so Brother Billy going to preach tonight. Amen. Oh, yes, right. Go for it, brother. I said the church has fallen off to the place where it's hard to find true Bible-believing Christians anymore. But I got news for you. They may be rare. You may not come across one very often, but God has still got a remnant in 2017 who's not going to bow their knee to Baal. They're not going to bow their knee to the Pope. They're not going to kiss the Pope's ring. They're not going to bow to the, to the religious organizations of the world and cave in to their pressures. Amen. He's still got a people that's going to stand for something in these last days. Amen. He still got a people today Amen. that's not going to bow their knee to Baal. Right. Sadly, most of the church has bowed their knee to Baal. Come on, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. On, I, I, I can't help it. I, it ain't my fault. I'm just telling it like it is. God's still got some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that are going to stand before the king and say, Our God is able. Yeah. Our God will. But if He don't, we still ain't going to bow down to your image. I said, Our God's able. Our God's will. But even if He don't, we still ain't going to bow down to your altar. Oh, Somebody. Oh, and I ain't getting no help in here tonight. I said that somebody's going to stand up to the religious world today, to the world society today, and say our God is more than able. I believe my God will, but listen, I ain't done yet. Even if my God don't, even if I'm consumed by the flames, I, I will not. I refuse to. I will not bow my knee to bow. Hallelujah. Yeah. Good preach. He's still going to have some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. 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 Say, Brother Billy, that's hard. Well, Brother Dave knew what he was getting when he called me. Oh, Hallelujah. Right. God's going to have some Daniels. Oh, Amen. Yeah. That's still going to pray. Yeah. Yeah. Even when they're told not to pray. Yeah. Amen. Right. That's right. Amen. We've lied to our kids. Yeah. We told our kids they took prayer out of school. They can't do that. No. Teacher might not be able to lead. It may not come out over the intercom, but there's not a power in hell tonight that can keep you from bowing your head and saying, thank you, Jesus, for the food. Thank you, Jesus, for the air. Thank you, Jesus, for what I'm about to partake of. Hallelujah. Bring it out. 
Amen. You see, listen to me for a minute. I'm going to try not to keep it too long. You're doing all right. Somebody told me this a long time ago, and I don't know, because I ain't never worked with animals or nothing. And maybe you know better than me. This was a preacher that told me this, so surely you can lie to him. He said, if you take an elephant when he's little, and you put a chain on his leg, and you put it to a stake where he can't move, he'll grow up knowing that he tried to get away from that stake and off of that chain, but it didn't work. So he'll quit trying. Even though after he's huge and big, he's got more than enough strength to pull that stake up, he won't do it. Because he's been convinced that he can't. Right. Oh, I said we've got some people today in the church that's been convinced that they can't. Come on. And they can't. Come on. They told Daniel he couldn't pray just what Daniel did. Right. The Bible says he went to his chamber and just like he had done the day before and the day before and the day before, he opened up the windows and he bowed down toward Israel and he prayed to the Lord his God. Amen. Right. Right. But Brother Billy, they might kill me. Well, they killed Peter. Amen. We any better than Peter? No. They killed Paul. Right. We any better than Paul? No. The only listen. The only thing man can do is take this old natural lie. That's right. Yeah. When they do that, if they do that, yeah. we will step out of this old mortal body and into the presence of a living God, Amen. and we will live forever right. and forever. Amen. You can cut my head off tonight, and I still wouldn't die. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because the Bible says if I believe in Him, if I put my trust in Him, I will have eternal life. So God's still going to have some Daniels that defy the order of the king. Amen. God's still going to have some Joshuas that will stand boldly and proclaim, you can do what you want to do. But as for me and my house, oh, I said as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So Amen. God's still going to have a remnant. Absolutely. There's still a remnant today. True. Amen. There's still some people who aren't going to bow to the pressures of the devil. Right. While the majority of the church is content oh. with hiding in the foxhole and allowing the devil to run rampant, God's going to have a remnant that will step out of the shadows uh, and True. face down Goliath uh, and say, you come to me with a spear and a sword, uh, but my weapons are not carnal. My, rep right. my weapons are spiritual. I come to you in the name uh, of the Lord. God's still going to have some Davids. Bring it out. Y'all yes. yeah. got a lot of Davids here. Amen. Before church, we was talking and everybody come in and seemed like somebody said, where's Brother David? <laughs> I turn around and look and there's another guy with his name David. Ain't no wonder y'all got so many pickers. Oh. Amen. King David was the musician. But we're gonna have, God's going to have some Davids. Absolutely. That'll face down the line. True. We could talk about Gideon's army tonight if we had time. 32,000 strong men yeah. facing down the enemy. God says that's too many. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Right. Come on, brother Nelly. We would be like, Lord, this ain't enough. Yeah. Right. Amen. But God says that's too many, Gideon. Because when you get the victory, and you will get the victory. I don't want the arm of the flesh to take the glory. Yeah. Oh, did you hear what I said tonight? I don't want the arm of the flesh to take the glory. So let's weed them out. Yes. Gets his army all the way down to 300 people. Now he's really thinking, Lord, this ain't nothing. Yeah. So from 32,000, and you might have thought, well, they might have a chance. Uh -huh. To 300. And then you're thinking, well, it's over for them boys. Oh. God still had a remnant. Yeah. And you see, the remnant of the day is dependent upon the same thing that Gideon's army was dependent upon. Oh, oh right. I couldn't preach if I had license. Kill it. Oh, I said, I couldn't preach tonight. We don't go forth in our own strength. We go forth in His. We don't go forth in our own power. We go forth in His. We don't go forth in our own might. We go forth in His. God's going to have a remnant of people who will face down the enemy and win the victory, not because they're great, not because they're good, not because they're powerful, but because on the cross of Calvary, when Jesus Christ said it is finished, the devil tucked his head between his legs and ran for cover. Amen? Because the battle was won. Hallelujah. And that victory tonight is yours. Amen? If we quit going around
around thinking, I've got to win the victory, got to win. Instead of doing that and saying, I got the victory. Because yeah. Jesus yeah. Oh, has made me the victor tonight because of his victory. Yeah. You see, I'm in him and he's in me. Exactly. That makes his victory my victory. Yes, sir. That yeah. makes his triumph my triumph. On, that means when they killed him, they killed me. When he came out of the tomb, I came out of the tomb too. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. God's going to have a remnant. He does have a remnant yeah. today. Yeah. Somebody say, there is a remnant. There is. There is. There is. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. While the rest of the church is falling for anything and everything, the remnant is going to stand for the truth. All right. Listen to me. Out of the midst, the older I get, the more I rely on my notes. You, you older folks know why. Out of the midst of a hippity hoppity rocking and rapping crowd, All right. there's going to arise the people who knows how to worship Him in spirit oh, yeah. and in truth. Amen. 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 Real worship don't stop with your feet and your hands. Amen. Oh, it gets down on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. Oh, it begins to stir your spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. God's going to have a people that are worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. While the religious world point to anything and everything except the real answer, the remnant is going to lift up the blood-stained banner of the cross and say the hope is still found in Jesus. Peace is still found in Jesus. Life is still found in Jesus. There's still only one way to get to heaven, and that is faith in what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. There's still only one way to have victory tonight, and that's through faith in what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. There's still only one way to be righteous tonight, and that's to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, like the group that John saw over there in the book of Revelation. And he said, who are these people? And the voice said, these are they which washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We have overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. There is a remnant that's going to rise up in these last days. Sure, there may be few, they may be few in number. The remnant always is. If you go out here to the carpet place and you tell them you want some remnant, they'll give you a piece of a bigger piece. Right. It's what's left. Amen. The remnant are those that are left that are still going to worship Jesus, that are still going to stand for truth, that are still going to preach the truth. Even if the government comes in and says you can't preach against homosexuality, the remnant church is still going to preach against homosexuality. Even if the government comes in and says you can't preach against abortion, the remnant church is still going to preach against abortion. Come on. Right. Mark it out. Not long ago, President Trump signed this thing that was supposed to Provide us with more religious freedom. I don't know the exact technical difficulties, uh, technical, <laughs> the technical terms for it. Amen. Johnson bill. Yeah. It's supposed to, and I, somebody posted on Facebook and they said, Preachers, now that you have the freedom to preach, what are you going to do? And I thought, What are you talking about? I was already preaching. All right. Amen. If we ever let the government, if we ever let the enemy shut us up, woe is us. Amen. Because we done backslid. That's all right. Amen. Amen. Read your Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, especially the New Testament, you'll find men of God who were told you better not preach in that name, you better not talk in that name, you better not witness in that name, and what they do. Did they wait for the government to give them permission to preach in that name? Did they wait? Oh, glory to God. I said, did they wait for the government to say, hey, it's okay for you to do it? No, they went ahead and did it anyway. Right. Brother Billy been doing it anyway. Brother John's been doing it anyway. I know a few preachers who wasn't waiting for a letter from Washington to say, hey, now you guys can preach. No, we've been preaching anyway. Amen. And we ain't going to stop till we get out of here. Amen. Oh, amen. Right. Preach to us. I quit preaching whenever they... I used to say when they pry my King James out of my dead hands, but if I'm holding it, baby, let them bear it with me. All right. Amen. True. We, the remnant's going to stand for the truth. Come on. Amen. And we ain't going to wait for Donald Trump or Barack Obama right. or George Bush or anybody else to give us the permission. Right. Our orders come from a higher source. I wish somebody helped me preach tonight. I said our orders come from a higher source than the White House. Amen. That's right. If Brother David Jones was to become the President of the United States, he'd have to step down from his position. There you go. 
because his position is more important than the President of the United States. Amen. The most important thing today is the preaching of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. He is not the Republican Party, not the Democratic Party, not the Tea Party or the Independent Party, but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He's still the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And the remnant of God is going to proclaim that. Whether the government likes it or not. Come on, brother. He's the ambassador for the King of Kings. Amen. When we used to preach out on the streets, the law would come and tell us to turn it down. As soon as they left, we'd turn it up. Yeah. <laughs> we see them coming, we'd turn it down. Until they got by, we'd turn it back up. Amen. Amen. You don't have to wait for the government to sanction your messages. True. They've already been given to you, if they've been given to you from headquarters, heaven's throne. Right. Amen. You don't have to worry about what the government thinks about it. Amen. While the apostate church, I'm trying to close. While the apostate church is turning away from the Word of God yeah. unto fables and other nonsense, the remnant of God is going to cling to His Word in the old rugged cross. Amen. 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 While the rest of the church world is blending in with the crowd yeah. and going along with the flow. Amen. And their music and their entertainment. Yeah. The remnant of the Lord is going to stand out from the crowd. True. That's right. And listen to me. You may have been blended in for a while, but there's going to come a time when you have to choose. Yes, absolutely. You ain't going to be able to ride the fence forever. True. Amen. True. You're going to have to choose whether you're going to accept Him or deny Him before men. You're going to have to choose whether you stand for truth or whether you cave into the pressures of the government, of the church. Listen, I get as much flack from the church as I do anybody else. Amen. Have my whole ministry. We've been preaching for 30 years. I know you're thinking, you don't look that old. <laughs> We've been preaching for 30 years. And Amen. the biggest heartbreak I've had didn't come from sinners. Come on. Came church people. Come on. Right. Amen. 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 But God's going to have a remnant yes, that instead of stabbing each other in the back, they're going to lift each other up in prayer. Oh, could I preach that in here tonight? Amen. Yes, I said God's going to have a remnant that loves one another enough, Brother Jones, that they're going to lift each other up in prayer and not throw each other down and kick them in the gut before they can get up. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. I've been around some groups and, and before you got out there, they done had the pastor for dinner and the deacon for dinner and the song leader for dinner and I ain't talking about they invited them over. I'm talking about they carved them up one side and down the other and spit them out. Amen. Hallelujah. God's going to have a people that say, oh, wait a minute. You're talking about my pastor. Wait a minute. You're talking about my Sunday school teacher. Wait a minute. You're talking about my song leader. Yeah. Tell her. Amen. Amen. God's going to have a remnant. He's got a remnant. Yeah. He's always had a remnant. True. Amen. He's always had a remnant. Right. Shout out to me, second and go. They still got like swords on. Come on. Yep. Everybody else bound down when the music played, and there they stood. Exactly. I always pictured this great crowd of people, and the music starts, and everybody bows, and you can see three guys standing up there. Mm -hmm. And the king's like, Who's them guys? Yeah. Why ain't they bowing? Uh, amen. <laughs> got love them. Amen. amen. God's able, He will. But even if He don't, let it be known unto you, we will not bow. Amen. We could use some old-fashioned... Listen to me. The church, of, the modern church of today look like they just sashayed from the beauty shop. But the remnant of God, they're going to look like they just crawled out of the prayer closet. Oh, hallelujah! Can I say that again? I said the modern day church looks like they just sashayed from the beauty parlor and got their petty and their nanny. But the remnant of the Lord, they may not look much, but they're going to go forth in the power of God. They're going to look like they just crawled out of the prayer closet. You're going to be able to tell by looking at them that they've been spending time in the presence of God. I've been around them kind of people. Amen. I've had some people say that about me and I walk off thinking, I don't know where you see that. I feel so humble. Amen. When I look at other people and I know of other people that I consider spiritual giants and I know how much I miss the mark, but I realize today that my faith is in, not in me never missing the mark. My faith is in the fact that Jesus Christ is my righteousness. Jesus Christ is my holiness. Jesus Christ is my victor tonight. Amen. The remnant. Listen, I'm trying to close. How many times have I tried to close? 
The seeker-friendly church is seeing just how far they can push the envelope. Somebody said, I don't know what a seeker-friendly church is. Let me tell you what it is. It's this group of jokers that go to this town and before they build their church, they go around to the neighborhoods and they start asking sinners, what would you like to see in our church? Most be asking God, not the world. And they'll say, well, I'd like some hip-hop music. Yeah. I like some rap music. Yeah. Amen. True. I like some rock and roll music. Right. I'd like to see some strobe lights. Amen. I'd like to see some entertainment. Come on. And what do they do? They fix their services to curtail to serve them. Amen. Yeah. And what happens? What is the fruit of it? Sinners come in bound and they leave bound. Exactly. Yeah. Sinners come in lost and they leave lost. Yeah. And by far, the biggest answer they'll give them is, well, I don't want to hear nobody preaching about sin. Because I don't want to leave feeling bad about myself. Yeah. Dumb in a box of rocks. Come on. You better feel bad about yourself. Yeah, if you are living in sin, you better feel bad about it. Amen. If you have came to the place where you can sin and never feel the convicting power of God, you are in trouble. Right. I said you are in trouble. I can't stress yeah. that to you enough yeah. tonight. True. If you live in sin and you think you're okay, you are in you're walking on dangerous ground tonight. Amen. But to seek your friendly church, that's what to do. Yes, sir. They have pushed the envelope and blurred the lines beyond recognition. Yeah. Nothing is off limits. Amen. Anything goes, but the remnant of the Lord is still going to stand for some old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. Amen. True. That's right. God's people, the remnant of today, yes. are still going to stand for something and not right. fall for everything. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'd like to came in here tonight with my diaper bag, but God wouldn't let me. Oh, God. Amen. I'm not the greatest preacher you ever hear. I'm not the greatest singer you ever hear. I done gave up on that, Brother Jones, a long time ago. I've heard people that can out-sing me. I've heard people that can out-preach me. But there's one thing I will go to my grave knowing that I never ever stood by and preached someone into hell instead of preaching them into heaven. Amen. Amen. I said, I will never stand before God. I refuse to stand before God, Brother Jerry, yeah. with your blood on my hands. Right. Right. Amen. So I have no choice tonight but to deliver to you what thus saith God. And God is telling a church that is backslidden and apostate and cold and lukewarm. He's saying, rise up, come out from among them. Be a separated people and preach the cross and preach my holiness and preach my way and lift up my blood-stained banner instead of the arm of the flesh. God's going to have a remnant. He's got a remnant today. Amen. He's got a remnant. Tell it, Brother Billy. He's got a remnant that's going to be like David when he said in Psalm 42 and 1, As the heart panteth after the water broke, so panteth my soul after Thee, O God. The church is full of hunger for the world. The church is full of thirst for the world. We need some people today that will get thirsty for God. Hungry enough for God to push back the plate. Hungry enough for God to spend some time in an old-fashioned altar. Hungry enough for God not to lay out and miss on church. Hungry enough for God to give even when it hurts to reach the world before it's too late. Amen. Oh, Preach it. It's good preaching. Bring it out. The remnant's going to be thirsty for God right. and nothing else going to satisfy. Come on. I hear people all the time, I don't know if you ever watch it or not, but Sister Frances Wagner has a program like every day called Francis and Friends. And there's people that will call in and they'll say, they'll say, well, our church is starting to say homosexuality is okay. What should I do? I, I can answer that for you. Yeah. Get out! Get out before they deceive you into believing the same damnable lie. Right. And this happens over and over. True. Our church is beginning to do this and they're getting off into this. And what should I do? Well, you should leave. Go find your church that's still preaching Jesus. Go find your church that's still preaching the old fashioned Word of God. Go find your church that's still lifting up the blood stained banner and the cross of Calvary and his finished work. I can answer that, and I'm not as smart as them people on there. Get out! Why you still got a chance? Get out! We've got churches that are having beer and hymn nights. Get out of there! They 
all gather around the table and sip their beer and sing their hymns. Get out of that mess. Oh, exactly. Tell it. Oh yeah. Beer and hymn night. Get out of it before it gets a hold of you. While you still know the difference between right and wrong, get away from that stuff. Amen. Somebody said our preacher never preaches. Well, he ain't a preacher. We sing and we worship. We have a good time, but we never have time to preach. Your church in trouble. You gotta have the word. You gotta have the word. So what do I do with the belief? I'm in the middle of all that mess. Get out of that mess. Move on down the road somewhere. Amen. I know you don't have that problem here, but you don't have to look very far to find it. Amen. You don't have to look very far to find churches that are doing those kind of things. Yes. Listen to this. Isaiah 58 and 12. And this time I'm not trying to close. I'm actually closing. Isaiah 58 and 12 says, And they that shall be of thee shall build thee old waste places. He's talking about the remnant. It says, Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Yeah. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Amen. The restorer of paths to dwell in. All right. Talking about the remnant. Amen. You see, as I close tonight, I want you to know that there's no question whatsoever that God has a remnant. The question is, are you going to be part of it? Yeah. Right. Amen. Exactly. We mentioned the Lord's coming. There's no question in my mind that the Lord's coming. Amen. The question is, are you going to be ready? Right. Yes. I got saved when I was five years old, raised in a Pentecostal church, and all my life, you know, it's been at least 20 years since I saved. It's been 45 years. And all my life, I have heard Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Yeah. And I believe that with all my little hair. Yeah. But even if He doesn't come while I'm alive, sooner or later, I'm fixing to be dead. Amen. You may think tonight, well, I've heard that. This young man sitting here that played the drums tonight, he's young. He may, you know, and young people like that might think, I'm sure he doesn't, but might think, well, I've got my whole life ahead of me. Yeah. You may be dead come daylight. That's right. That's right. Amen. You might say, I don't believe Jesus is coming. Well, let's suppose he don't come for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You still fix him to be dead. And the question is, where are you going to spend eternity? That's right. God has a remnant. The question is, you're going to be part of it. God has a true church. The question is, are you going to be part of it? There is an eternity. The question is, where are you going to spend it? And God is speaking to the Holy Spirit. is speaking to His church tonight. That it is time, if it ever been time, it's high time now, to be the remnant that God is calling His people to be. To be those that will stand for the truth that He's calling to stand for the truth. Amen. To be like those that... Moses stood at the gate of the camp and looked at the people and said, Who is on the Lord's side? That's what the Holy Spirit is speaking tonight. Yes. Because we've got a church world that don't even know the real moving of the Holy Spirit. The question is, are you going to be part of it? I had a woman not long ago, we were having a bake sale. It's been a while now, I guess. In front of our church. And they're in Livermore. And she walked up and she was talking. And she said, I've been everywhere. I just she lives two blocks from us, yeah. our church. I've been everywhere and I just can't find a church that preaches the truth. I listened about all the goofiness I could listen to, and I said, Well, wait a minute. My wife would tell you. I said, We've been here for ten years. I haven't seen you. She ain't been everywhere because she ain't been there. No. If she'd have been there, she'd have heard the truth. But it leaves me, and I said that to say this, it makes me wonder just how much truth people are really looking for. Right. All right. Maybe it's not the truth that they want. Absolutely. But there's only one truth tonight. Truth. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And His blood. Right. That's the only way to be saved. That's the only way to have the victory. That is the only way to be part of the remnant tonight. Amen. The blood wars church. The redeemed. Amen. Are you blood washed tonight? Amen. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Let me see your hand tonight if you know Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me see your hand tonight if He's your Savior. Amen. Amen. Stand with me tonight if you would. Amen. If you're here tonight under the sound of my voice 
and you don't know Jesus, I want to invite you. I couldn't, I couldn't leave tonight knowing that I didn't ask you this question. 